Hi, welcome to part 2 of the Blender beginner course. In this part, I'll explain rendering and lighting. So, stick around until the end. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Distro website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high-quality game-ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackcave.com. First, let's dive into rendering and some of its properties. I need a plane object. Press Shift A and add a plane from the mesh menu and scale it using the S key. Press Shift Space and select the Move tool. Okay, now press the Z key and switch to Render Mode. As I mentioned earlier, in Render Mode, lights, colors and other final elements will be calculated. With this section, I can access the render settings. As you can see, the EV render engine has been selected. EV is a real-time render engine, allowing me to move in the scene and see changes instantly. I can select Cycles instead. Cycles is an offline render engine, meaning you have to wait for the final result, but it gives higher quality, especially in shadowed areas. As you can see, it's slow and takes time to render, but it also provides better shadows and overall quality. I can improve the speed of the render by choosing GPU as a rendering device instead of CPU. But it's disabled. To enable it, I need to go to the Preferences. In the System section, I need to set the Cycles render device to a specific tool, non means CPU. The CUDA option is usable with NVIDIA GPU. If you don't have an NVIDIA device and select this, it will automatically switch to CPU. HIP is used for AMD devices. I've set it to CUDA, and now I can utilize the GPU. It's much faster. There's a number up here. It's the sample count. Higher samples mean better quality and more rendered pixels. Actually, that's the rendering progress. In CPU mode, the samples increase slowly. But in EV, we don't have samples like this because it's real-time. In the worst case, EV takes only one second to complete the render. We can see some noise, especially in the shadowed areas. With higher samples, the noise disappears. The samples on top show 1024, but it progresses by almost 50 samples. We need to configure it. In the sampling section, I have two parts, viewport and render, which I'll explain each one. The max samples in the viewport section are set to 1024, but something is preventing the samples from reaching this number. There is an option here called Noise Threshold that automatically adjusts the max samples. We need to turn it off. Now the samples will fill the max samples as intended. With higher samples, you can see that there is almost no noise in the result, and the quality improves. We can also use a capability called Dino. It's a heavier process, but it effectively removes noise using complex algorithms. As you can see, the samples are increasing slowly. And there is no noise here. Let's turn the Denoise option off for now. The next section is related to the render time samples, and all the fields look like the viewport settings. Render time means that if you go to the render menu and render the image, these values will be applied. Now let's specify a number for the max samples. The samples will reach the max samples, and 300 is a good value while the denoiser is active. Alright, now it's time to render the scene. The render process will use the camera view. 
Pressing the zero key on the numpad lets me go to the camera view and change its position. I explained how to change the camera view in the previous part. Now let's render. Before that, press Z and switch to solid mode to make the render faster. You can see the render progress at the top of the render window, along with the samples and remaining time. Here's the final result with the denoiser applied to the image. Next, go to image and save it. You can change the format here. You can also change the color depth. 16-bit results in a larger image size. Next, choose a name and save. Now let's open the exported image. The question is, how can we set the export resolution? In this section, you can choose a resolution or change the percentage. For example, setting it to 50% will reduce the resolution by half. The next section is for the exporting process where you can select the destination path and file type. For example, I copied the path I used earlier. With these settings, the render will save automatically when it's done. All the settings for the final image are here. Now let's work with the EV engine and improve it. Can we improve it? The shadow area looks too harsh. We need an effect called global illumination. Eevee has some features, and one of the most important is ray tracing. Let's activate it and see what happens. As you can see, the result looks like it's from another world, and it's real time. Let's compare it with cycles, and you'll easily notice the differences. Ray tracing has some attributes that can improve the effect. For example, you can specify the quality, thickness, intensity, and other aspects of the ray tracing process. With the resolution attribute, I can adjust the quality and make the process faster or slower. The first value provides the best quality, but also makes the process slower. The last value is the fastest version of ray tracing. We might not notice significant changes in this scene, but in a more complex scene, the difference will be much clearer. I explained ray tracing in detail in this tutorial, which you can watch. TV also has samples, which work in real time and slightly improve the result. Let's set it to 64. Higher values will improve the shadows and details. These features are only available in Blender 4.2 and higher versions, and I am using 4.3. Alright, I've explained the rendering section as much as possible for beginners. Now let's introduce lights. Here's a light in the scene that I don't need. Press the delete key. I want to add lights manually, so press shift A. In the light section, there are four types of lights. Let's start with the point light. It acts like a ball, where only the position of the light matters. The rotation is not important since it emits in all directions. In the light properties section, we can access the settings of the selected light. The power is pretty stirred forward. Let's increase it and see what happens. As I mentioned, the position of the light is very important. The number of lights, their power and color are also crucial for conveying the atmosphere. The next attribute is the light color. This grid is bothering me. Let's move the objects. 
Right now let's adjust the light settings as needed. The radius makes shadows softer and setting it correctly makes the result look realistic. It's good but it takes a lot of processing power. Soft shadows are demanding to compute. A value of 0 creates a hard shadow effect which is faster to process. Next is the shadow settings, where you can adjust or turn off shadows, but I'll skip it for now. Here at the top I can change the light type, but I prefer to add other types manually. Delete this light and press Shift A. This light simulates the sun. Its direction is important, but its position doesn't matter. Rotating it lets you change the light's angle. The attributes are similar to the point light, but the power is called strength for the sun. Sunlight is global and lights up the entire scene. For example, let's scale up this plane. Increasing the angle makes the shadow softer. Although it's a bit heavy to compute, it will take some time to finish when rotating the camera. Now let's adjust the light settings to get a sun-like effect. That's better. We also have shadow settings here, but I won't explain them as they are more detailed. Next, let's introduce Spotlight. It works like a flashlight, with the main range in this cone shape. The properties are almost the same as the other lights, with a few differences. Power is the same. In a spotlight, both the position and rotation of the light are important. Let's rotate the light to observe its other behaviors. There is also a property called radius, which you already know. It makes the shadow softer. And as I mentioned, it's more demanding to compute than hard shadows. With the beam shape property, we can change the light shape. Size will increase the width of the light's bottom. Blend will make the edges of the light softer or sharper. We can see the light's shape using this option. And we have shadow settings just like before. The last light is the real light. It will illuminate a specific area based on its square shape. Using the S key you can scale it up, but larger sizes make the shadows and light intensity softer. Both the rotation and position are also important for this light. Let's increase the power. As you can see the shadow is very smooth. We can improve it by decreasing the light size or increasing the distance between the light and the object. Now it's better, the size of the light doesn't have a big impact on the light range. Only the shadows are affected by the size.
We can also change the light shape. There are four options. Rectangle works like a square, but we can adjust the X and Y values separately. The square shape can only be scaled with a single value. X is horizontal and Y is vertical. Disk will make the shape circular. With ellipse, you can adjust X and Y separately just like with the rectangle. As you can see, the shadows in these areas are smoother than at the sides. And that's due to this shape. There is also another tip flight. The lights I have introduced so far are physical lights. But this tip I'll introduce uses an image. In this timeline window, I can open other windows. These windows correspond to the panels above. Blender allows us to open any window we want, anywhere. We need the shading window, and then we select well. I'll explain all these sections in detail later. Here we see two shapes called nodes. The background node represents the environment color. As you can see, it's gray, and we can easily change it. Or you can increase its power by raising the strength. Also, we can add an image or texture by using another node instead of the color. Press Shift A to open a list of nodes in Blender. Each one of these nodes can create a different effect. I need to search for the environment texture by its name. This node has buttons and properties. We need to open a texture by pressing the open button. The textures I want to use are called HDRI, and you can download many of them from the Polyhaven website. Now that the texture is loaded, we need to connect it to the background node by linking the color output to the color input of the background. As you can see, the environment now looks like the image I loaded. This texture also acts as a light, in addition to being the environment color. We can replace the texture close it, and perform many other tasks here. We can also move and rotate the texture, which I'll cover in the next part. In the next part, I'll introduce more effects and begin modeling. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.